starve Britain into submission by mining British waters and sinking merchant ships. To demonstrate the futility of continued resistance, Hitler gives his air force, the Luftwaffe, unlimited freedom of action against Britain. What Hitler's trying to do is demonstrate that the Luftwaffe really has total control of the skies at this point. They've, they've walked over Scandinavia, they've just defeated the Low Countries, and mighty France, you know, one of the kind of superpowers of the world. So, you know, Britain needs to kind of sort of come to heel as well. Although Hitler wants to avoid an invasion of Britain, the three wings of his armed forces have been drawing up plans for such an operation for months. Any cross-channel invasion is an incredibly difficult undertaking. I mean, the Luftwaffe say, well, you know, it's fine, we can do it, but we have to have absolutely perfect weather. Um, the Navy are incredibly cautious because they know they're going to have to take on the Royal Navy. Then there's the army, who is incredibly cocksure and thinks it's all going to be fine because they're the army and they, you know, they're kicking butt with absolutely everybody. And I just assume that the Navy is just going to be their carriers across the channel. Germany's army and air force outnumber their opposing British forces. But the Navy, the Kriegsmarine, have suffered recent heavy losses fighting the Royal Navy in Norway. So the idea that the Kriegsmarine is going to have to have a scrap with the Royal Navy obviously fills them with complete fear. Facing a far superior opponent, the Kriegsmarine need the Luftwaffe's help to sink as many Royal Navy ships as possible. This is a job for bombers such as the Heinkel HE-111. In Oslo, Norwegian aviation expert Guttorm Fjeldstad has come to look at the workhorse of the Luftwaffe in World War II. Oh, wow, would well, you look at that? A German Heinkel 111 uh, bomber. It's the only surviving German-built Heinkel left in the world. The Heinkel carries a variety of bombs. We have here the 250 kilos bomb, and then you have the concrete bombs we use for bombing ships, because ordinary bombs exploded when they hit the target, and the ship kept sailing. And then they realized if they were dropping a concrete bomb, they just went straight through the hole of the ship and made a big hole, and the ship sank. One other thing about the Heinkel is the distinctive nose, which is unique for this aircraft. It is this all glazed cockpit, which gives the crew a fantastic view around them. Wow, here we are in the cockpit of the Heinkel 111. What an amazing view. The crew pilot would be sitting here next to me. And uh, during bomb run, he will kneel down, open this hatch, and aim with the bomb sights. And uh, he would also man the forward machine gun uh, when there's fighters around. Flying this thing in 1940 must have been an amazing experience, but also quite scary, because you're so vulnerable here. There's nothing to protect you. You just have this perspex around you. And the lack of heating in the cockpit could sometimes force the pilot to take extreme measures when trying to land. The windows could freeze up so you didn't see anything. But they actually had the sign so you could slide back the window and you can lift up the whole seat so your head is actually up in the air outside. I can imagine being quite scared sitting with my head up, all frozen up, minus 20 degrees, and trying to land this thing. It's, it's, it's just mind-boggling. It's, yeah, it's amazing. June 4th, 1940. Nazi Germany defeats the Allies at Dunkirk in France. More than 330,000 British, French, and Belgian troops manage to evacuate, but have to abandon nearly all their equipment. German forces have swept through France. They're now staring across the English Channel. Britain is in their crosshairs.